Take a look at this. We have ailerons, elevator, rudder, spare fifth channel, and of course, two brushless speed controllers built into this tiny little module. In this video, you'll get all the inside information you need. Let's take a quick look at the specifications. Multi protocol refers to the fact that it can use the fly sky, Wi Fly, or microzone protocols. And as I am in the video, it will work with the multi protocol module in the Radio Master, that specifically is the four in one module. Working voltage 1 to 2s, control distance in the air less than 800 meters. Now, as this is primarily designed for small craft, that shouldn't be an issue. The two speed controllers on there, 12 amps each, and they're running the BL Heli firmware. There are pads on there to be able to change the parameters should you need to. The Beck output, 1.5 amps, 5 volts. The weight, a mere 3.7 grams, and it's only 18 by 35 millimeters, as you saw in the first part of the video. The types of motors are, are these 1103, 1104 types, very common, especially for quadcopters. And the antenna is connected via an IPX connection, so you can change that for the antenna of your choice. It has three working modes. We saw it first in the mode one, which is five channels. There is a light strip that you can attach to it that we'll look at later. Uh, as you saw, the five channels and the two motor controls. In mode two, we still have the five channels, but the ESCs provide a, a differential signal to the two motors. When you actuate the rudder, as we'll see, the, the propellers will speed up in one direction using the rudder signal as a mix to provide differential thrust. And finally, in mode three, it will just output SBUS and PPM. Uh, we're not going to be looking at that today. So that's a very brief overview. Now let's take a closer look at the board itself. Here then we can see the general arrangement of the front of the board, if you will. We can see here PWMs 1, 2, 3 is the ESC 4 and 5. And you saw that I had the ailerons, elevator and the rudder functions there, not using 5 at this moment. It appears by removing these resistors, you can make the ESCs independent, drive them with your own signal, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure, not going to be looking at that today. The two ESC outputs there, the three connections, maximum of 12 amps. Battery voltage here, negative and positive. And as you may have spotted, they do supply a decoupling capacitor to uh, help keep down any noise. And this here is the regulator, which is the Beck function. Looking now at the other side of the board, at the top there, the IPX connector, and to the left, the signal wire for the LED strip. If you're going to be using this at 1S, you need to solder bridge or connect somehow those two pads. And here we see the two ESC programming sets of pads. Uh, they're really tiny, so <laughs> not going to be looking at that very closely. For the 12 amps, we just have three FETs per side. Uh, I did try to find out the spec of them. Here's a close-up photo, but uh, I couldn't find out what they were. If you happen to know, leave me a comment. Here you can see how I'm connecting things up then. The aileron is with a typical Y cable that I've made there. And because I'm going to be using this on different models to play around with different motors as well, I decided to connect just servo connectors to the ESC output pins and then just soldered some pins to the end of the motor wires there so I can swap those around easily to change the direction of rotation. Quite straightforward then. Let's see how to bind the receiver. Using my favourite Radio Master Pocket then with the 4-in-1 module in the back, you select the FlySky 2A protocol. Now, 
there is also FlySky, but this is an old protocol and won't give you the telemetry. It will bind, but you'll get no battery voltage or RSSI. Leaving that at FLSky 2A and getting ready to bind. Put that to one side. Powering up the receiver then. You can see the LED is blinking slowly there. We wait now until it starts flashing quicker. As you can see it is now. And now we press the bind function. And there we are, all bound up. Quite a simple and straightforward procedure. So everything is working. Looking at the telemetry screen then on the pocket, we can see it's empty to start with. If we scroll on down, eventually we can see the A1, the, which is the battery voltage, the link quality, RSSI, a3 appears to be the same as the RX BAT. That's all really you need. All I should be concerned about is primarily the battery voltage and the receive quality, possibly RSSI. Having any telemetry at all on something as basic as this is a definite plus. Zero We've seen how to bind and we've shown it in mode one. But how do we know that it's in mode 1? All we need to do is to turn off receiver our receiver and uh, ignore the warnings of death and destruction. If we look at the LED, oh, by the way, I have set the failsafe uh, in the menu to prevent any motor spinning up when the signal is lost, etc. But I digress. We can see then that about every few seconds it's flashing once. So that's how we know it's in mode one. So clearly two flashes is mode two and three is mode three. But how do we change those modes? Well, we turn our power off and then taking a suitable implement, just a cut off cocktail stick here, we have to press and hold the button is easier said than done. We then power on and wait. Now it's going into a cycle. So each flashes three times. So that's one. Now we're in two. So when we are in this example, we want to go to mode two. So when it was in mode two, I just released the button and now we can see it flashing there. We then turn off the power, turn on our transmitter. Welcome to HTX, throttle cut, throttle active. Zero volts. So we are now in mode two and this is our differential thrust mode. So if I start the motors spinning and then put in rudder you can see the differential thrust there in action however note that we can see here our rudder servo still on channel 4 is not behaving like a rudder anymore it's proportional to the throttle and if you watch this when I'm activating the differential thrust you can see there that that would not be uh, great as a rudder. With differential thrust you can't use the rudder on channel 4. What happens if we reverse channel 4? Having reversed channel 4 then we see that it has reversed the direction of the differential thrust.
There we are, so we know that mode 2 is working for us. For completeness then, let's take a look at mode 3, which outputs SBUS on channel 2, as I have connected here to my little tester, and on channel 1 should be PPM. Powering on our transmitter then. Welcome to HTX. Pressure cut. Pressure active. Zero. If I switch to measure on this meter and select SBUS, we can see that SBUS is working there, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. Interestingly, channel 4 is SBUS and channel 4 on here, in which case I'm pretty certain that channel 5 will be working on there as well. I happen to have a button for channel 6 as well there we can see so the whole whole range of SBUS I guess 16 channels would be available there and of course we still have our ESC output but with no differential and therefore mode 3 is working for us at this point, I expect you're looking forward to a dazzling light display from the LED strip. Unfortunately, I have to disappoint you. I've tried a couple of different WS2812 strips and there's just nothing. I've taken 5 volts from the channel 5 and that's feeding that in there and the signal wire going where it's indicated on the board. I've checked with a logic probe and there is a signal on that pin but unfortunately nada. The information on the LED strip and indeed most of the board is rather sketchy at best but uh, that's all I have for you today. There are links down in the description to the board itself and where you can download the very basic manual. Last comments then. I think it will be a very useful board, especially for small builds with the, the built-in ESCs. Fantastic. I have some question about whether it will su support 12 amps. 12 amps at 7 volts even is 84 watts times 2. Is this board really going to dissipate 160 watts? I don't think so. As an example here, these motors that I'm using are... A1504 2700 kV paired with the Nazgul 3040 propellers and I think you can just see on the current display here hope I don't destroy everything if I go full tilt for a moment altogether that was just about 5.5 amps which is going to be more than enough to fly small foamy planes but it's nowhere near the 12 amps for small builds i can't see this being a problem of course if you're going up in the current league then you're going to have to make sure you've got plenty of airflow coming over those fets and maybe even think about sticking on some of these little aluminium heat sinks that you can get but i don't think i'm going to be heading into that zone just yet there we have it then. I hope you found the video interesting and let me know your thoughts in the comments below as to whether you'll find this board useful or not. Thanks for watching.